Hi guys, one of the most frustrating things about covering politics, especially over the last number of years, is how absolute tripe and lies go completely unchallenged. If it isn't some right-wing dodgy think tank who is let off the hook regarding their funding, it's parties like Reform UK and its leader Richard Tice being both presented as a serious organisation and the former MEP being able to say whatever he wants and not be held to account. I feel the need to respond to these things and call them out, which actual journalists should be doing. Here Ty spoke to Times Radio where he was able to misinform the public and get away with it. But I won't let him off the hook. Have a listen. My message is he can save himself a phone call. We did that back in 2019. The Tories promised that they would get things done, do the job properly, and they've let us down. They've betrayed us on multiple factors. Richard Tice, double-digit vote shares in both Wellingborough and Kingswood. Nigel Farage says, you've come of age as a party. He's not going to need to come back to lead you into an election now, is he? Well, we're delighted with this progress, our best two ever by-election results. It took UKIP about 18 years to get to 12%. Uh, we've achieved this in just under three years. And yeah, both candidates, Ben Habib in Wellingborough, Rupert Lowe in Kingswood, did an amazing job. And the Tories are absolutely terrified of the progress we are making. And, and we're on the map now. The Lib Dems seem to have disappeared. And as far as we're concerned, it's onwards and upwards from here. Uh, no challenge from the journalist. How many seats have you won? The, there were by-elections recently where the Lib Dems picked up seats. You have won zero seats. So you can't say that the Lib Dems are not on the map. <laughs> you have won zero seats. And once again, the journalist, no pushback. There'll be people who are looking at your vote share, impressive though it is, and somehow wondering how you could be doing better. I mean, there are some polls, some national opinion polls that show you doing even better than this. How can you, how are you going to kick on? Because even though you've had a good night, your best night yet, there will be people out there who say your poll numbers are still a bit of a mirage. What do you say to those people? Well, we've just proven that completely wrong because... They were saying that we were polling at sort of 10, 11, 12, 13 percent, but we weren't getting that in the by-elections. Now we've got that in the by-elections. That completely uh, removes that concern. But yeah, sure, I'm ambitious like those who, who say we, we want to do better. We, we all want to do better. I want to go uh, onwards and upwards from here. And we've got to keep working hard all the way through to the general election. And we say to people, this is not a one-term election project. This is a a medium-term project, it's multi-elections, we want proportional representation so that we get fair representation in the House of Commons, something we actually share with the uh, the Liberal Democrats and a number of other parties. And we're putting forward very different policies from the two main parties. Both of them, frankly, represent forms of socialism, very high tax, high wasteful government spending, nanny state regulations, mass low-skilled immigration, and the multi-trillion cost of net zero, which all of which leads to, as I predicted at the beginning of January, uh, zero growth. In fact, we're now we've slipped into recession, as I feared we would. You can't grow an economy with those burdens. And that's why the policies that we're putting forward and we're putting forward some more a week on Saturday across the whole range of different uh, departments will show what we need to do to get the country growing again. I don't doubt there'll be Tory. Uh, no challenge there once again. Absolute tripe. So... He wants, he wants people to believe that net zero is the problem. Net zero is the, re, is the reason why the UK is in a recession at the moment. What is net zero? Net zero is about reducing carbon emissions. And what would it actually result? What, what would be the result of doing this? Trying to achieve net zero. I don't know whether the UK will actually achieve net zero. But what, what, would, be, what would that entail? It would entail investment. The government investing in new technology, research into new technology, and the implementation of that new technology. For example, heat pumps, insulating homes. Imagine insulating all the homes in Britain. That would save people lots of money. It would also protect the environment. But it would save people money. And it would require the government pumping money into the economy, creating jobs because you would need people to install these heat pumps. You would need people to upgrade these homes. You would need people to... In uh, to insulate homes as well. So you would need plumbers, electricians, builders, contractors. You would need all these people. It would create jobs. It would invest. It would pump huge amounts of money into the economy. 
Now, it would be difficult to achieve because there's a shortage of plumbers, electricians and builders. Why? Well, part of it is because of Brexit, which Richard Tice, of course, a member of the Brexit party, they still, not in this logo here, but there is, if you look at their official logo, it still contains the Brexit party. So he's, he's talking about barriers. He's talking about how you can't grow the economy if you have this drag and he's blaming net zero, when the real drag is Brexit. Something that he campaigned for and he still supports. But he won't talk about Brexit, and unfortunately the journalist will not hold him to account. I am not a frigging journalist. I am a frigging YouTuber. My credentials are no different to some guy down the pub. But how is it that I am the one who's holding Richard Tice to account when Times Radio, the journalist of Times Radio, is not? I called him out twice already. He said about the Liberal, Dem Liberal Democrats have disappeared. The Liberal Democrats have actually won seats in by-elections. Reform UK have won zero seats. And this thing about net zero. Net zero would result in, in investment in technology. It would create jobs. It would boost the economy. Richard Tice is against that. Why? Is it because of perhaps the, the people who back financially the Reform UK party? Or Reform UK business, as, you, as we should call it? But none of this is raised. Why is it not raised? Why is it my responsibility to do this? Why, I'm not a journalist, as I keep saying. I have n my credentials are no different to a guy on the street or people watching this. But I'm holding him to a higher standard than quote-unquote journalists are. This is the problem here. People like Richard Tice are able to say whatever they want and go completely unchallenged. What happens is this information filters down into the minds of the public and the public think, oh, well, the problem is the net zero. Because if it wasn't, if it wasn't a problem, then he would, of course, go ch uh, ch the journalists would call him out on it. But the journalists are not calling, out, calling him out on this. This is why so many people voted for Brexit, because the likes of Nigel Farage, Boris Johnson, Jacob Rees-Mogg were on TV almost every night, going completely unchallenged, unchallenged by journalists. You had, the, uh, you had to have experts call them out, but the journalists did not do their job. So now people will think, uh, the Liberal Democrats are disappearing, Reform UK is taking their place, which is not the case, and that net zero is the drag that's on the economy. The reason that there's a recession is nothing to do with ending a freedom of movement, which means that businesses can't access the workers they need. It's nothing to do with the, the, the Tories cutting public services and reducing direct investment into the UK over the last 14 years. It's nothing to do with austerity. It's all down to net zero. Because Richard Tice is going completely unchallenged. <sighs> Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.